Howdy my totally tubular gamers, we're back with, you guessed it, another video. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If you're new here, maybe stick around. I got a fun video for you. Today, we're going to be ranking slash reviewing all of the Outlast games. So for the unfamiliar, Outlast is a series of first-person horror games developed by small Canadian studio Red Barrels. Now, the original game came out in 2013, and it gained notoriety pretty much right out of the gate. And people were digging it. The game came out during what was, at the time, a horror video game drought. We weren't exactly getting many scary games during the early 2010s, so this game, it was quite welcome. Sure, it had some slender vibes, especially with the camera, but it was still a shocking, scary, first-person horror game. The game would even get a fully-fledged DLC just a bit later. Then, a few years went by, and we'd actually get an Outlast 2, which had no connection to the first game and was a very different type of game. It was not as well-received, and after that, they said they were kind of going back to the drawing board. And that leads us to today, where The Outlast Trials has officially come out. The game was not early access for the last year, but I really wanted to wait for that 1.0 release. The Outlast Trials is very different from the previous two games, but it still is a first-person survival horror experience. And now that I've given you this history lesson, I can tell you today we're looking at all of the Outlast games. That's Outlast 1, it's DLC, 2, and then the 1.0 release of Trials. And before we get any further, I want to give a major shout out to Game Tomb and Red Barrels for hooking me up with the Outlast Trials. Very much appreciated, super cool. But I'm not going to let that affect my judgment of these games. I'm going to give you the lowdown, talk about the good, the bad, everything in between, give each game a review, and stack them all up against each other, see how they all pan out, which ones are really worth playing. And so with that, let's get right into it. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below what your favorite Outlast game is, or if you're playing the Outlast Trials. We got the Patreon and the Super Thanks. Any support is truly and greatly appreciated. Seriously, thank you very much. If you even made it to this part of the video, thank you very much. Let's get right into it. The central has gone on long enough. Of these four games, which do I think is the weakest? I believe the weakest of the Outlast games is Outlast. 2, which came out initially in 2017. I very much remember when this game came out, I didn't hear a lot of great things about it, and I actually skipped it until a few years ago when I got it for dirt cheap and went, I'm probably going to talk about the Outlast Trials, I guess I'll play through Outlast 2, and yeah, I can see why so many people didn't really care for it. Now, Outlast 2 is decently different from the first game. It's actually very different when it comes to the setting, plot, and characters. It has really no connection to the first game, and it sees you playing as a totally different cameraman. You play as someone named Blake Langerman, and he's with his wife, Lynn, and the two of them are roaming the Arizona desert to explore the murder of a pregnant woman who is only known as Jane Doe, you know, like the most generic name imaginable, but the two of them actually get separated in a helicopter crash, and Blake has to try to find his wife while going through this village full of loony, crazy, cult-like people. Imagine Resident Evil 7, the Baker family, but even crazier and loonier and a lot more murdery than the Baker family even was, and they were pretty murdery themselves. The plot of this game is pretty fucked up, the story's pretty messed up, the way everything progresses, like, it's just shocking moment after shocking moment Part of the time it feels like they just went for as many shocking moments as possible rather than some cohesive story. But it all decently does come together for a really dark, just depressing story. Like, this is not a happy game. Not in the slightest. It is fucked up and it is just sad. But I can appreciate that it was relatively different from what the first game had. This cult of people, like, these people are just absolutely awful and beyond depraved. And it's to the point that it actually makes the atmosphere rather tense. Like, these people are so psychotic that it really does create a different kind of atmosphere and I think it was actually pretty decent. I'll just immediately say when it comes to being scary, Outlast 2, yeah, it was a little scary for me. It wasn't as scary as the other games, but it had me jump a few times. At the very least, though, I felt rather tense throughout just thanks to all the loonies. And while we're on the topic of presentation and atmosphere, I think Outlast 2 has a very good presentation, especially since this is basically an indie game. It looks really good. The environments are detailed. The character models are really well done. The lighting is great. It's a good looking game. And so while the story and the setup and the presentation, the atmosphere and the horror might be decent to good. Unfortunately, the gameplay is where Outlast 2 kind of fumbles it a little bit. Like, I'm not going to say Outlast 2 is a bad game, but I don't think it's a particularly very good game either. It actually plays quite similar to the first Outlast game, where it is in first person. You are just trying to get from point A to B. It is incredibly linear. It's always just get to the end of the area. Really, every single time you do have the camera, which serves as your flashlight as well as you can view through it like night vision, and so you will have to find batteries to charge it up. That's the only resource you have to to actually manage here and of course along the way a bunch of psychos show up to try to kill you and you can't fight back so you'll just have to hide from them there's plenty of different things you can hide in, but yeah, it is one of those hide-and-seek horror games where you don't want to get spotted by them and you just want to escape. You don't actually get to fight back. 
And then outside of that, there are plenty of set pieces that show up where you need to run from someone, you need to get somewhere incredibly quickly, you gotta hide from something, and that's really all of the gameplay. It isn't too complex, but neither was the first game. Sometimes simplicity really is key, but I just don't think it comes together as nice as the first game when it comes to the gameplay. For instance, I don't think the level design is as straightforward or as good as the first game. Being in these like cornfields in the general wilderness, like it doesn't make for better level design. It just makes me lost, confused. I'm running around in circles and I just get annoyed. I find it a bit tedious. Like maybe that's the point. You're supposed to get annoyed and be like, oh, I'm lost. I can't figure out where I'm supposed to go. But it didn't really create a positive experience. And then on top of this, you're usually getting chased by somebody. And so you just end up dying and retrying over and over and over. And it just doesn't create a compelling loop. And speaking of being chased or hiding from the enemies, like it just wasn't as good in this game. I feel like the AI can see you way easier. The stealth feels just even sloppier than the first games. Like it just isn't very good. And then I feel like the set pieces in general just are nowhere near as good as the first games. They just kind of feel half-assed and thrown together and they're overly scripted. Like if you even slightly, slightly deviate from the path, you just die pretty much immediately after to retry. And so I tried some of these areas so many times until I did it exactly the way the game wanted me. And I think that's rather unnecessary. It does not need to be this strict with such a small margin of error. It doesn't feel like the first game had this either. And you know, all of this, I guess, could be chalked up as a skill issue but I just didn't have the best experience while playing through this. I found myself kind of frustrated and annoyed several times just because I kept replaying shit over and over because I didn't do it exactly how the game wanted it. But at the very least I was laughing at just how goofy all of it does look. I mean if you take a step back you're a dude running around with a camcorder up to his face and he's being chased by a bunch of crazy cultists through like a cornfield. It's pretty goofy. And then they do some fucked up shit. It just grosses you out and makes you look away like if you're squeamish do not even bother with this game. It is real gory so at the end of the day do i recommend outlast 2 maybe if you love outlast or maybe the trials then yeah i guess you could try this one if it's dirt cheap otherwise you could probably skip it it's not terrible but it's not very good either it's very middle of the road and i can see why people didn't like it but for me personally it's just kind of eh it's all right i guess and so here we have Outlast Whistleblower, which came out in 2014. Now, this game was a DLC for the original Outlast, but Red Barrels often considers it like its own game. And if you buy like the collection, the Trinity, yeah, they do consider it its own game. And so I'll give it its own spot here. I'll talk about it, but don't expect me to do this forever DLC. At least I actually like this DLC. So this game does take place before the original Outlast and it explores and explains how the outbreak at the asylum even happened. And then at one point, it actually does take place simultaneously simultaneously with the main game and that's all I'm gonna say. I think the plot is pretty decent in this game. I like that it adds that additional context and background. I think that is cool and just like the first game there are plenty of shocking just straight up unforgettable moments and these aren't unforgettable moments in the same way that like Final Fantasy 7 is unforgettable moments. These are unforgettable in the worst way possible where you just go oh my god or like what the fuck man but it's got plenty of those moments despite its short runtime. When it comes to playing the game it plays very very similar to Outlast 1. I mean it is a DLC for it. It virtually is the same when it comes to the gameplay. The level design is incredibly similar. The environments are the same. It's still all set at the asylum and if you've played the gameplay of Outlast you'll be just fine here. You walk around these very linear environments usually just trying to get from point A to B, escape some crazy person. You do have the camera that acts as your night vision basically. You will have to find batteries to charge it and some really really awful people will be coming after you to kill you, torture you, do whatever the hell they want with you, and you get to run away and hide. This game has no combat like the other Outlast games, and so you can run away from them as fast as you want, but they will actively pursue you until you hide in like a locker or under a bed. You can close doors on them to try to slow them down, but that's as much offense as you're getting in. And like the first game, it creates a very tense, chilling experience. Like when you're hiding in the locker and they're walking around in front of you saying some crazy shit or you're just trying to hide from them, it does get a little tense. And then on top of that, you're probably looking for like a key or something so you've still got to explore around the environment knowing that this fool is walking around the whole time looking for you yeah it can be a tense atmosphere for sure and on top of that there are a few set pieces of few scripted moments where you have to do exactly what the game wants and it creates a pretty decent experience i actually quite enjoyed this dlc more than i thought i would it's not too long taking it most two or three hours 
but I feel like they actually managed to cram a lot into those few hours to create something that's actually worth playing. It isn't just some throwaway DLC, it does add to the original game. If you like Outlast, then you totally should check out this DLC. I would say it's just as scary and tense as the first game. It still has an excellent presentation, and it provides even more context and background to that original game. I mean, if you're buying the Trinity, you're already going to get it, so it's totally worth trying. I'd actually recommend this game more than Outlast 2. I think it's got better set pieces, better level design, and I found it kind of scarier and it's not as fucked up as Outlast 2. It's fucked up, but it's not just as ridiculous as that game. I still think it's a decent horror experience. And so here we have the game that started it all, the original Outlast releasing in 2013. I very much remember when Outlast came out. We weren't getting a ton of horror games at the time, and so here comes this new scary first person horror game. People were excited when it came out, and then it was free on PlayStation Plus, so even more people tried it. And sure, while this game is clearly not everyone's cup of tea, I think most people could appreciate what Outlast was trying to do. So this game is about this freelance journalist known as Miles Upshore, who somehow receives a a tip off from an anonymous source about this asylum where something shady's going down and so he goes there he gains entry into the asylum and once he gets there yeah something has definitely happened something has gone horribly horribly wrong and he finds himself just trying to get the hell out of the asylum I think the premise and setup are actually pretty good in this game I mean you know some bad shit is going down just from the moment you're driving up and things just continue to spiral and get even worse and worse as you play through this game. And there's a bunch of notes that you can find as well that really do some decent world building and explore what exactly was going on in this asylum that led to this happening in the first place. There's a lot of sinister evil people in charge of this asylum and that's all I'm really going to say. Now I even thought this back then but after playing the other Outlast games, something that I realized the original Outlast absolutely nails is its atmosphere. This game is a really dark, scary, just straight up tense atmosphere throughout pretty much the entire game. It really never lets up. It's pretty relentless in that aspect. I think Outlast 2 and Whistleblower have decent atmospheres and have a few scares each, but I really feel like neither can compare to the original. This game just has a lot of shocking set pieces, a really depressing atmosphere, and I just found myself getting way more immersed into this setting more than the other two, and I would also say this game is considerably scarier than the other two. This game, it really just hit different. Maybe it's because it was the first first Outlast game versus the others where it was like, okay, well, I've kind of done this in the first game, but it really do be hitting different. And yeah, when it comes to being scary, I think this game is scarier than the other ones. It certainly got me way more times than the other games. But when it comes to how this game plays, it's not the most complex. It is rather simplistic, actually. You can move around. It's in first person. You can run, jump, crouch. You can interact with the environment. You can open doors. Really, it's just the basics here. You are given a camera, and this basically works as your night vision. I guess you just stare through the camera to see when it's really dark and I mean that just sounds ridiculous I mean just imagine some fool running around with his face up to the camera but it works and it does take batteries and these batteries have the lifespan of like a Walkman no it's even worse than a Walkman it's just terrible when it comes to the batteries you'll constantly be having to find batteries and you'll find them throughout the environment if you do even a little bit of looking around but that's the only resource you have to manage in this game not your health there's no inventory nothing like that it really is just the batteries and I would not call this game a survival survival horror game. And then when it comes to the combat, there is none. There is no combat in Outlast. You have no way to defend yourself. If someone's chasing you, you can close the door on them to try to slow them down, but that really is it. No, this is one of those horror games where you'll need to hide from the enemy, like Amnesia the Dark Descent. You will be going into lockers, you'll be hiding under beds, you'll be just trying to hide and avoid the enemies. There very much is a bit of a stealth element to it. You don't want to get spotted by them, and if you get spotted, they'll chase you relentlessly until you hide. And I know this clearly isn't for everybody. I know there are plenty of people that don't like horror games or you can't fight back and you have to just hide and they don't think it's scary and it's ridiculous and you know part of me can't agree with that but I also do like what Outlast is doing I think it still creates a very tense atmosphere getting spotted by the enemy and the sound plays and you got to run hella fast from them I think it's still scary sure it's not the most challenging or rewarding gameplay loop and you don't feel like a total badass or a beast when you get past a certain section it's more like oh I escaped and got away but I still think it can provide a thrilling tense experience which is what it's all about at the end of the day when it comes to like the level design and the set pieces I think this is the best of the original Trinity I don't know the level design seemed the most cohesive it made the most sense you know when you're exploring around these environments it's not easy to get lost and I didn't really think any of the encounters got super repetitive or 
annoying or frustrating or anything like that. And then the set pieces, man, a couple of these set pieces still really sit with me even like 10 plus years later where all the naked dudes in the shower come after you. Yeah, you ain't going to forget that one. On top of all this, I think the presentation has aged very well. This game is 10 plus years old now and it really was an indie game and I think it looks good. The environments are dark and dreary. The frame rate never had any issues there and the models look good. When it comes to this game's length, it's around four or five hours long and I think it ends when it needs to. It ends before it truly gets repetitive. I mean, if it continued even another hour or two, it'd totally get old. Hiding from the enemies would eventually get old and it would lose its edge but I think it ends at a good time. In terms of anything else I don't like about the original Outlast, I just have never liked the last like 30 minutes of this game. I just have never been a fan of the direction they go. And I still very much feel that way. Overall, I think the original Outlast is a pretty decent to good horror game. Look, it's not one of the instant classics like some of the Silent Hills or a few of the Amnesia games, but I still think it's an enjoyable time that you can like if you like horror games. Sure, at times this game might be pretty stupid. I mean, you're a guy running around with a camera pressed up against his face face being chased by a bunch of naked guys in a shower, but I still am going to recommend the game. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. I quite enjoyed it, and I think it was one of the scariest games from the early 2010s, and nowadays it's dirt cheap, so if you haven't tried it and you want to try a different kind of horror game, maybe this is the game to try. But what I believe to be the best of the Outlast games is actually the latest, the Outlast Trials, finally hitting its 1.0 release and leaving early access, we can all play and enjoy this game. Again, another shout out to Game Tomb and Red Barrels for hooking me up, I really do appreciate it, and I've been having a ton of fun with this game. It is pretty different from the other Outlast games, the game is a prequel to the original game taking place during the Cold War and it sees your character that you actually get to create getting whisked away to this secret base and being forced to take part in these experiments. And these experiments are not for the faint of heart. This is not your baking soda in the volcano high school projects or experiments. No, these are fucked up and are as shady as it gets. When it comes to the actual plot itself, there really isn't a focus on it like the other Outlast games. There's plenty of lore and world building, but there's not a straight emphasis on it. Really, it's all about doing these trials. And these trials are not just for one person. This game actually is very cooperative focused. And I'll just immediately say, if you are a solo player or someone who played the Outlast games by themselves, I don't know if I can recommend this game. This game really is at its best in co-op, especially when you're playing with people you actually know. I played with two of my buddies and yeah, we've been having a pretty good time on this game. But if you were by yourself, I don't know how much you'd enjoy the game. When it comes to this game's format and structure, totally different from the other Outlast games. There isn't some linear progression or story mode you go through. Really, you're dropped into this asylum looking area where you can play chess, you can arm wrestle, you can customize your cell, you can upgrade your character, and you can even choose what skill you want, and then you choose which trial you're going to do, and go into the trial. The trials are absolutely the main focus of the game here. There's actually a good amount of trials. I know in the early access period there wasn't that many, but the full release does have a decent amount of trials, and when it comes to the core gameplay loops of the trials, it's not actually crazy different from the older Outlast games. You're dropped into this environment, usually given one main objective, and to do that objective, you'll usually have to go find something, whether it's keys, you're looking for some kind of special object, maybe you're activating some switches, you're doing this little mini game with the radios. Usually there's multiple parts to it. Sometimes you have to push someone, sometimes you're looking for one specific object. You are just trying to complete the objective. There's a bunch of randomized factors here, like where the items may be, changes every time, and where items on the map might be. And of course, during all of this, you aren't alone. There are plenty of psychos that want to do God knows what with you and this game actually has some decently memorable psychos and they'll hunt you to the ends of the earth. Ones like the taint tickler really aren't messing around here. They will hunt you down and the best option ultimately is to just hide from them like the other Outlast games. There's plenty of things to hide in more so than any other game and with there being multiple people they might lose track of you real fast but they'll go after somebody else and it creates a very frantic experience. But there are actually a few more layers to this gameplay rather than look for item and hide from crazy man. There are actually four skill trees you get to select from and all four of these get their own special skill. This includes like a stun grenade, an x-ray to help you find important objects or see enemies, a healing ability, and the ability to even drop mines. But none of this actually hurts the enemies, you do just stun them temporarily and they will continue to come after you. And choosing which skill you're going to go with is important, these skills are useful, and it saved my ass plenty of times. There's also inventory in this game because there's actually items to use in this game, there are some resources 
resources to manage. You probably noticed I haven't brought up the camcorder. There's no camcorder here. Instead, you have these goggles drained into your brain that act as night vision, and you will need to find batteries to keep these going. If you run out, it's not the end of the world, but it kind of sucks, and so you'll want to find batteries to charge those. There's healing items, there's a revive item, and then there's actually a sanity item. Yes, a new feature to this game is you actually do have a sanity meter. Your character will start losing their shit, and certain traps will go off that will make them just absolutely lose it. And if your sanity gets to an all-time low, you really lose it, and you'll start hearing voices, people will start coming out of the woodwork, and this giant creature known as the Skinner Man will come around and try to kill you. And if you stand in one place, he'll kill you pretty fast. Another neat touch is when you start losing it, the game actually will start fucking with you in ways you wouldn't even imagine. It'll start messing with usernames, it'll start having enemies show up as your friends, you won't know who's your teammate and who's an enemy. Sometimes there's actually nothing to begin with. Like, I actually think these are decent touches. It's not like amnesia levels, and I'm pretty sure this was in Lethal Company, but it's still a good touch nonetheless, and it keeps things from being too simple. At least the objectives are relatively varied. Sure, at the end of the day, you really are just looking for stuff, but they're visually varied. Like one time you're sawing off some dude's leg. Another time you're feeding children bleach, or maybe you're taking this so-called snitch to the electric chair and killing him yourself. Yeah, these trials are fucked up, and you have to be pretty sick to think of this shit, but you know what? Playing through these, it's not actually the worst thing. It's gruesome and it's gory as hell, but the gameplay, it's actually decently engaging. The game really incentivizes that cooperative gameplay. You can do plenty of things on your own, but if you start acting as a team and maybe splitting up to go do the objectives rather than all sticking together, you'll get stuff done a lot faster and a lot more efficiently. And the game will reward you. You actually do get rankings based on how well you complete the trial if you do some of the optional objectives like finding these posters, and depending on how you do, you might get more money. There is actually currency in this game, and that currency is used to customize your character or your cell room. I'm not even kidding. There doesn't appear to be any microtransactions, which is good. You also get these upgrade tickets, which make the game even more fun, and you start getting more advanced techniques. Some of these you totally would expect to be in the game to begin with, like being able to run and close doors, but they're an upgrade. What I'm trying to say is there are actually some incentives to, you know, doing well in the trial, not just totally fucking it up the whole time. The game will actually reward you, and these trials are decently replayable. There are some random factors that come in here, and some of the trials are clearly better than others, but I thought almost all of them were actually enjoyable. It's not the most challenging, and it's not the most varied, but I actually did have a good time with it. And I can't believe it, it was actually a fun experience. Yeah, feeding all the children bleach or pushing them all into the grinder, who would have thought it's a good time? But above all else, it still is tense. It still is a horror game at the end of the day, and I think the game still is scary. Now I'm just getting scared with all of my friends. I will say the game does not build any tension or any atmosphere or anything like that. I mean, Outlast was never amazing at doing that, but at least the first game, it's some atmosphere here. They really just throw you into the thick of it and you start getting jumped pretty fast. And while I'm talking about things that I don't really care for in this game, I feel like the doors are just super uncooperative, never doing what I'm trying to do. A few of these upgrades I feel like should just be in the game anyway, not upgrades. The prices for some of the customization is pretty crazy and has me think that microtransactions might be added at some point. The game feels like it could use a little bit more polish still. I did have some bugs and plenty of times where stuff was clipping through other things. And my last issue is probably the biggest and that is that the gameplay, it totally can get stale. You know, Outlast gameplay, it isn't the most complex and even with the little things they added here and there, at some point, yeah, it's gonna start to get repetitive and feel stale. Even with all the varied objectives, I don't think the gameplay loop is that deep. And this game really acts like one of those games that they want you to keep coming back to. There's even like weekly trials that keep getting updated. They got a roadmap and everything. It's not like a live service, but it seems pretty similar to what a live service game is doing. But I've never really heard that term thrown around with this game. It seems more like just an online cooperative game that keeps getting updated. And I don't know what kind of longevity this game will have. But that is more of a question mark for the future. I mean, as it stands, there again is a good amount of content and I think you will have fun with the content that's here, but coming back to it a few months down the line, yeah, big, I don't know about that. If this game gets put on like Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, I think it's absolutely gonna thrive and I think people are going to totally love it, but as of this moment, I don't know how much longevity the game has. At least I think the presentation is, again, very good. You gotta remember, Red Barrels is not this massive studio. It's a tiny little team, and I think the game is very good looking. The presentation is really solid. The sound effects, though, and the music and the cues and all that, Probably not the best, but at least graphically, yes, the game is good. Look, I know the Outlast Trials, really Outlast as a series, is not something I can recommend to everybody. I can't even recommend it to all horror game fans. 
but I think if you've enjoyed Outlast 1 or 2 even a little bit, you're probably gonna like this game, much more so if you're playing with people you know. Like, I can confidently say this is one of the best cooperative horror games I've ever played. It's not like Lethal Company good, that level of immersion, but I still think the Outlast Trials is good if you're a fan of the genre and have some friends. I think you very well could have a good time with it. Of course, it depends on who you're playing with, but that goes for any cooperative game. I think it's the best of the Outlast games, it's definitely got the most content, I've had the most fun with it, and I've probably been scared the most from it. It doesn't have the best atmosphere or tension, and it certainly can get old, but at least we have arm wrestling. The arm wrestling is actually really fun in this game, chess is pretty cool as well. I've heard several people say that the trials are just a mini game and the focus really is on arm wrestling. This this might be agreeable. But in conclusion, I recommend the Outlast Trials, I recommend Outlast 1 and its DLC as well. Outlast 2, uh, not so much. But Outlast is a pretty wild series, I know some people absolutely hate these games, other people love them. I personally like them and I hope you enjoyed the video I did on them. Yeah, I know it was a little rambly, but I kinda had a lot to say about these games and I really have been having fun with the Outlast Trials, it's been one of my favorite games all year, honestly. Okay, one of my favorite games of this year that isn't an RPG. Either way, let's wrap this up, if you made it to this part of the video comment bricks as in what's in the wall that's our secret code word that you made to the end of the video you'll get a little heart from me thank you very much please like share comment subscribe and have a good one